Hello and welcome back to the ORCAD X layout tutorial series. This is another optional video as we're going to look into the fanout function in ORCAD X layout. Again, my name is Adam Fuchs. I'm a product engineer at Cadence Design Systems. And for this video, as I mentioned, we're going to be looking at fanout. If you watched first pass routing, we did a lot of manual routing for things like all of the stubs for the ground pins on capacitors, especially the decoupling capacitors all of the different pins coming out of this microprocessor, including all the ones that needed vias dropped to the bottom layer, that was all a manual process. But ORCAD X also has some layout accelerators that make it a lot easier to do not just placement, but also routing and a lot of other features, or I should say required things in the PCB layout process. Now the fanout command is easy to find. It's the fourth option in this floating toolbar where normally you have your add connect command. If you do a right click, simply select fan out. Now, as with any other command, we have this little helper window, which we're going to be using. And we're going to be trying to fan out this component right here using some of the automated features built into this command. Now, radial fan out is usually used in BGA type packages. If we were to use it on this component, we might get some odd results, but we can give it a try. There's different ways to activate the command. You can either select a whole component or you can select individual pins. If I were to hit tab on my keyboard here, I can select an individual pin and it would fan out that pin. I'm just gonna hit control Z. Additionally, let me just go ahead and turn off all of these additional layers here. Let's just look at the top layer. Additionally, as I mentioned, I can select the whole component and it's going to try to fan out every single pin on that component. And here, there's some check boxes at the bottom for including unassigned pins and include all same net pins if needed. Let's just do an undo here. Now, this little box at the top of this helper window allows us to, for example, select the fan out only to go in the upwards direction. Then using the selection filter, I'm going to try and select all of these pins here and fan them out at the same time. And now you see we have a much more usable result simply by changing the direction in which the fan out goes. You can adjust things like the trace width, the pin to via space. The pin to via space is the minimum space between the via and the pin. We can verify that at 0 0.127. If I go back to my select command, hold down Alt, just turn on vias here. Now we're gonna hold down Alt and measure between these two. And you can see that the air gap between the pin and the via is 0 0.127 millimeters. Let's go back to the command. Additionally, you can choose your start layer and end layer, especially useful if you're using micro vias or blind or buried vias. I just recommend using the net default. However, you can choose a specific via that you want to use for your fan out if needed. So if we were to go through the rest of this, I'm just gonna uncheck this include unassigned pins. For these pins, we would want to use the right side, click. For these pins, we can use the bottom side, click. And for these pins, we can use the left side, click. And then if we want to place a via and pad for that, um, again, via and pad is very common, especially for BGA parts. We're not going to go over it in depth for this video. Now, if I were to continue working on this from the point of fan out and then start to do some routing, you know, I can always delete extra vias and traces as needed, but any signal that I know needs to go to the bottom layer to another pin somewhere on the board, I at least know that there's enough space for it to fan out from this component without having to do some you know, fancy magic of moving all of these vias around. And you can actually compare this to your own routing and see how it compares. Maybe starting from a fan out is cleaner than just doing it by hand. Okay, one of the other options we have is linear, which is pretty useful for especially these dual inline parts or any parts that have you know, pins on two sides that maybe we want to fan out either inwards, outwards, or inwards and outwards. As you can see, the, the three options are here. I'm just gonna go ahead and move these capacitors. Again, in this case, maybe we don't want to use the fan out option, but just as an example, if these components were over here and we were using fan out, 
we can select, for example, the out direction. And let's select the whole component here. The channel space B is the space between two vias. The pin via space, as you can see, is C. We measured that earlier. And then the trace width, we're just going to stick to the constraint width. So I can click on the component and you can see that all the pins are fanned out and routed for us. Pretty neat. Likewise, if I do an undo, we can do the in and out direction and you'll see that they alternate the direction in which they get fanned out. Now, one other option where I think the, especially the outwards direction linear fan out is super useful is when you're working with your decoupling capacitors. For example, I know that all of these decoupling capacitors have a ground pin that I want to fan out to a via that will then connect to an internal ground plane. Now, finding all of these in the previous video, what we did is we simply colored the ground net to something a little more recognizable. And then we, let's do a, let's do a blue color. And then we simply either pasted or drew on stubs manually. What we can do instead is use the search function to our advantage. So I'm gonna first go ahead and adjust the trace width to 0.508. As I know that that is the target trace width that I want for all of these. And then what I can do is in the search panel, I'm gonna to go to the pins tab. I'm gonna filter by the reference designator and make sure that I'm looking for all parts with a C reference designator. Here you can see if you scroll through, that's all the capacitors. And then for all of these pins, I wanna make sure that I'm only doing this on the ground pin. So I can click on this filter, type in GND for ground. And now you can see these are all the pins on capacitors that have a ground net. Now this is automatically highlighted for me. I can do a right click select on canvas. These are all going to be selected on the canvas. And because my command is active, I can just click on one of these and look at that. All of the capacitors, which have a ground pin on them, now have a, a 0.508 millimeter stub going to a via attached to them. This here, for example, this is a resistor, so that's why it didn't get added. But as you can see, this is a very quick and easy way to add your ground stubs to all the capacitors. Now, there's some cases where it might extend too far and overlap with another component and cause a DRC, but that's what DRCs are for. They're quick and easy to find. We can refresh the DRC in our design, go to update, find the DRC. Here we can see SMD pin to through spacing and simply adjust that with our slide command. Maybe fan it out to this side. All right, that is it for the fan out command. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one where we do some second pass routing.